is the head coach at Duke is Mike Elko, and he joins us on the Adam Gold Show. Hey, thank you very much. I know everything is crazy. It, did it seem? Does it seem like bowl season, the holidays, came on us faster this year than in years past? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's been crazy this December with the uh, recruiting end and the transfer portal and everything else you got going on. I think you wake up and bam, you're right in the middle of bowl season now. I'm not even in the transfer portal and I feel like I've been (laughs) pulled to it. I may ask you a question about that uh, in a little bit. The last time we spoke, I believe, was Operation Football. And I knew you were optimistic. There are a lot of good players that you had access to this year let's just start with the quarterback Riley Leonard and the type when I watch him I see prototypical college quarterback is is that fair uh that's probably underselling his ability to throw the ball a little bit I think um you know obviously he's a dual threat kid so he's Mm -hmm. got athleticism and he can make plays with his feet and, and that part of it is obviously a huge piece of what we utilize. But uh, I think he does have arm talent. I think he does have the ability to make mm-hmm. the throws that he needs to make to be an NFL quarterback. I think he's maybe more of a new age quarterback than I would say a college guy. Well, okay, I, I wasn't trying to pigeonhole him into not a, uh, not a pro. I was sort of amazed, and all of these things are subjective and who knows when people vote. I was amazed that he was not either second or third team all ACC. I think there was an argument you could make for Jordan Travis. But aside from all the passing numbers that Riley Leonard had, he was 10th in the league in rushing. How do, <laughs> don't those yards count? They, they certainly should. They certainly counted for us. And, <laughs> um, I think we wound up third in the league in rushing mm-hmm. offense, and he was our leading rusher. And so, uh, yeah, I think when you talk about his ability to multitask and uh, help us move the offense down the field and score points, he certainly does that at a really good clip. Led you in rushing, led you in rushing touchdowns as well. Is there something that he does that we haven't seen yet? Uh, Is he a good cook? Can he play a musical instrument? What, uh, What else is there to Riley Leonard? Probably the basketball component. He was an extremely talented basketball player in high school. Um, and, and the rumor has him being the best basketball player on our team. So, um, yeah, I would say that probably piece is a little different, too. Does John Shire know this? Uh, no, we're keeping that one away from John. <laughs> we're trying to make sure we keep our quarterback with us through the offseason. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about your opponent in, in the upcoming Military Bowl. First of all, I'm sure you've been to Annapolis, but Annapolis, you probably went there uh, maybe when you were on staff uh, at Wake. I know they've played there. Uh, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal city. Uh, but Central Florida is high-powered. They've scored well over 400 points this year. You have a couple of common opponents. What have you seen from them as you have scouted them? Yeah, I think exactly what you said. I think they're very explosive on offense. Uh, I've actually played against a lot of their their offensive players from the, my time at A&M. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the quarterback was at Ole Miss as sure. the starting quarterback. The wide receiver was the starting wide receiver at Auburn. And so – uh, a little bit of familiarity with them, but they're very explosive on offense. You know, Gus always has done a great job of, of finding ways to score points. Uh, and then I think they're very athletic on defense. They've got a really good front four, and they've done a really good job of pressuring the quarterback. And so, you know, we're going to have our hands full up in Annapolis for sure. Mike Elko, Duke head coach, joining us here. Military Bowl uh, coming up, I believe, 2 o'clock next Wednesday from Annapolis. How hard was it to convince Jordan Moore that he would best help this team at wide receiver? Um, it wasn't hard. You know, I think Jordan's a phenomenal kid. I think it's got to start there. And so uh, it actually, we actually got into it a good way. He was having, um, he was having shoulder tendonitis in training mm-hmm. camp. And so we were having to shut him down for certain periods where he couldn't throw. And so one day I just kind of walked up to him. I said, Hey, instead of standing on the sideline, why don't you jump in at wide receiver and see what it looks like. And, he started doing it. I think he had a lot of fun running around out there. He made some plays early in camp, and then um, he's kind of taken it and rolled with it. And so, uh, obviously, him going out there as an explosive playmaker is another big piece to our success this year. And his unselfishness, I think, is really what allowed the transition to happen. Jalen Calhoun was your leading wide receiver, but certainly in the first half of the season, I don't know if anybody caught more big passes than Jordan Moore. I mean, do other wide, people who have played wide receiver their whole career, are they mad because he made it look so easy? 
Yeah, uh, there's probably a little bit of that. And I think, you know, one of the things that we saw watching him play last year was how athletic he was. And they tried mm -hmm. to use him as a wildcat quarterback. And so I think right. we were able, when we moved him to wide receiver, to find ways to get him out in more open space. And um, he's he's an elite athlete. You know, his athleticism and his ability to just run around is, is phenomenal. And I think over the course of the year, uh, he started to craft himself even a little bit more at route running and those types of things. And so uh, he's got a lot of growth still in him. I think you're going to see a much better version of him at wide receiver next fall even. I mean, he's uh, you have a lot of really good skill position players. Did, did anything surprise you when you got here and you got on the field? You can watch tape all day long. Uh, but when you get on the field with these guys, what maybe jumped out at you about, hey, this guy is better than I than even I thought? Yeah, pro probably two things jumped out at me really quick that I, I felt like gave us a chance. I think one was just the character of our locker room. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as we started going through winter workouts and getting to know the guys, um, obviously we've got a really, really good group of high character kids and they started – to really come together, they started to care about each other. And I think that's a big piece of it. I know it sounds like coach speak, but it really is a huge piece of, of what happened. And then I think as we started getting into spring football and, and fall camp, uh, I think there's a competitive spirit in these guys. And I think, you know, the hunger to prove that they were better than what the last couple of years results were, uh, I think really drove us to become the team that we became. And so uh, I, I would say those two things jumped out pretty quickly that you don't see on film. You're a defensive guy. Did their ability on defense surprise you at all? Uh, I don't know about surprise. You know, I really tried to keep an open mind. You know, I knew um, schematically we would be a lot different, um, you know, and again, not better, not worse. I've said that a lot, but, you know, <laughs> just different. And so uh, as we went through kind of installing our package and our plan and, you know, it took us a while. It probably took us until about the middle of fall camp to really have a good pulse of, how we wanted to try to utilize different players and different pieces. And I think in the middle of fall camp, we kind of found a good rhythm of where to put guys that they could impact the game. And, um, you know, so then you look at the years that guys like Brandon Johnson had, guys like Shaka Hayward had, guys like uh, Dwayne Carter had. Yeah. And I just think they were able to really excel as, as we kind of found what their strengths and weaknesses were. So many good, fast players on your defense. Mike Elko is joining us, Duke head football coach. I, I talked about this at the very beginning of the show. I am curious how you process, let's just say, the game against North Carolina here or Georgia Tech. I mean, you were this close to maybe being in Charlotte a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's it's interesting. You know, we, we lost the pit by two and that one's an easy process because, you know, we had a chance to make a couple plays down the stretch and we didn't make them. Um, you know, the, the Georgia Tech and the Carolina ones are, are still a little bit hard to <laughs> even wrap your head around because we did make plays down the stretch and, um, you know, some of them just didn't count. So, um, you know, we're, we're uh, you know, we got to find a gap to close for sure. There's certainly a lot of room for growth in our program. Um, and, you know, we're going to have big challenges next fall as the schedule ramps up. And so, you know, we know we've got to do a better job consistently throughout four quarters. But um, I do feel like we gave ourselves a chance to, to be in Charlotte and be right there with the best in this conference. You uh, you scored touchdowns on consecutive plays against North Carolina, right? We did. It's a lot we of, did. So a lot of points uh, came off the board. Mike Elko is here. Now, you mentioned the portal earlier, and I am I, – I, this might be a touchy subject. I don't know, but – because of what the portal is now and because of the, the openness that we all know what schools are doing and contacting players ahead of time, uh, were you worried at all that some, like, for instance, a Riley Leonard, that there was going to be just a bunch of people coming after some of your better players in the portal? Yeah, I think you're naive nowadays if you're not worried about it. I think no matter what school you're at across the country, you better have a plan on how you're going to retain your roster. I think somebody asked me very early on my philosophy on the portal, and I think my number one philosophy on the portal is try to keep our guys out of it. <laughs> and I think you've got to really approach it that way, and, and it, it, it really is. And so you know, we have had a lot of really open and honest conversations with our guys about – what it's really like, what, what it's really like at other places, at other schools, and um, you know, just to try to get them to understand and appreciate what they do have here. And again, it speaks to the character, you know, the character of the guys, because certainly people are coming after our guys no different than they're coming after anyone else's. And 
Um, you know, we've got a really connected, unified locker room, and, you know, they're committed to coming back next year and trying to take this program even higher. And because so many of these decisions are at least uh, in some ways rooted in finances, um, maybe they look at Duke as being somewhat vulnerable because there isn't a huge fan base and maybe there's not as much, not as much attention paid to it. Do you, what is your selling point to Riley or other kids that this is the best place for your development? Yeah, I think I've seen football at every level. And, and I think the way we coach our kids, the way we develop our kids – and the camaraderie that they have in that locker room is unique to Duke. And I don't think um, regardless of the, the logo image or what, you know, maybe traditional power calls them, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're getting the same level of coaching, the same level of development uh, or the, the same level of camaraderie. And, and that piece of it, along with the Duke degree, I think makes a, a lot of noise with these kids. Um, and so you can look around the country and see a lot of, big name programs, big name logos um, that aren't necessarily having the success they want to have. Um, you know, I think you look at what we're doing here and I think kids are really excited about how they're getting coached and developed. I think the uh, the diploma, when it says Duke on it in that gothic lettering, I'm sure has a lot to do with why kids stick around, as you as do you, Mike Elko. Uh, love talking to you. Good luck against the, uh, the Knights in Annapolis coming up next Wednesday. I appreciate your time. Yeah, I appreciate you, Adam. Thanks for having me on. You got it. Take care. Mike Elko, the head coach at Duke.